Hello, job mechanic tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 3 for the Nintendo DS. Not 2DS or 3DS, just 1DS, with me, Blue Inkylo. So, um, <laughs> after our, our horrible defeat last episode, I worked my way back to that point off camera, as I said I would. And I've uh, got a few more levels up and stuff. I think we're a couple levels ahead of what I was last time. And we've got a fair number of changes and stuff like that. So, first off, the job levels should be a little bit higher, except for Lunith, who is now a red mage. Now, the reason I decided to go with that uh, is kind of a double reason. Uh, for one, the monk has no magic defense. Uh, if you remember, um, Lunith as a monk had, like... 13 magic defense or something, so he'd get wiped from every multi-target flame spell that the boss is going to use. And if I remember correctly, most bosses in this game have some sort of multi-damage magic, and monks just never do good against that, so magic defense being a major weakness. The other thing was I didn't have enough, well, he, well for one, Lunith wasn't doing a whole lot of damage anyway, and I didn't have enough healing to keep up. So now as a red mage, we'll have uh, some curing and some black magic just to balance out. Now if you noticed, he actually has less ability to cast spells, like the number of spells, than a white or black mage. That has nothing to do with the job level, that's just red mages get about half as many spells as white mage and black mage. I believe the red mage can also only learn up to level 5 magic, which doesn't matter yet. But uh, I think white and black get up to level 7, and red is only level 5. So this is kind of the limit. Um, speaking of red mages, I figured I'd show you something interesting. They can actually equip almost any of the weapons we've got. We could go with bows, we could go with swords, we could go with staves. He wears heavy armor for the chest and helmet, as in not the mage robes and not the caps. But he wears the bracer style gloves instead of those kind of gloves for the knights. So it's kind of a cross between heavy armor and magical armor, which ends up giving him really good defense, plus he's in the back row, Plus, he's got more magic defense than a knight. Not quite as much as the mage robes gave our mages, but still not bad. Uh, and also, of note, because he's got the ice helmet on, he'll take half damage from fire. So, these two will take half damage from fire anyway, which will help a lot. And then these two in the back will just have really good magic defense. We still haven't gotten better mage helmets yet. That'll come eventually. Now, um... I think that was the main changes. I did have to go, I had to spend a lot of time making money to buy all this stuff, and I ended up buying more um, staffs, so I've got, you know, six all together now, so I had to go spend a lot of money on that. So that was what I spent a lot of my time on. And uh, I have actually zipped through this dungeon and got the treasure, uh, so you won't have to worry about that. But we are gonna zip through it on camera, because there's more stuff I want to talk about while we're redoing the easy stuff here. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about job levels and mechanics as we go through. So, uh, uh, we have talked about this a little bit as we've gone along. Um, I sort of, in the early days, when I first started this series, I kind of forgot completely what job levels did. And someone commented, and it's just sort of coming back to me as time goes on. Your character level, as in experience points from killing enemies and your actual level, mostly determines your hit points and your kind of base stats, like strength and stuff. Although, that stuff is determined by what job you have, it doesn't, the job level doesn't matter. So it's kind of uh, a combination of your character level and what job you're currently equipped with. So you could get to level 90 and just switch jobs to get whatever stats you want. It wouldn't make any difference, if that makes sense, for, for strength and intelligence and stuff like that. Um, so mostly you get... Uh, you get experience from killing enemies, of course. You know that by now. No big deal. It's shared across the party, so if we get 200 experience for killing this turtle, uh, everyone will get 200 experience and we'll get more HP. Mostly HP and a little bit of stats. That's great. It doesn't actually change how much damage you do with most of your attacks, though. That's where job level comes into it. So, for a mage, like a black mage, every level up on your job will give him a little bit more black magic damage and a little bit more number of hits for his weapon. Um, so the knight, as he gets more and more job levels, I think it might give them some ability to defend as well. I'm not 100% sure. Like, I haven't gone through the, the numbers perfectly, but point is you get better at fighting. You get more damage, more healing, more stuff like that. Um, now the trouble is, how do you get job levels up? That's kind of the question I was trying to figure out. Because I was going through this dungeon, uh, and just trying to grind for some money and stuff, and not getting very many job levels up. Like, I had the Red Mage level 1. We're not going to fight the boss just yet. Um, 
so I had Lunas switch to uh, to be a red mage, and if you kill an enemy's, like basically what was happening is I was doing these battles, and every battle would go pretty quick. I could go um, ice staff, you know, cure everybody a little bit, and another ice staff, and we could wipe out basically any any enemy battle in one round is what I mean to say. And the result of that was we actually don't get very many job levels up. I actually did a little bit of research just to figure out the details. The way it works is for every action your characters do, they get some job experience. You don't need to know the exact details. It takes 100 job experience to get a level up. You get between about 10 and 24, depending on what class you are and what action you do. Uh, suffice to say, it generally takes around 5 to 10 actions per character to get a job level up. So if you always just do one action per battle like that, you'll actually not get very many job ups, which doesn't make you very strong. It makes you get money, uh, experience, experience and gill ma mainly for ending battles quickly. One more battle just to prove my point. What you can do, and I don't recommend doing this too much, especially early on, because we're not going to stick with these jobs for very long, to be honest. Um, but what you can do is we can, um, we can kill one enemy, for instance, and try to stay healthy here. And whatever, I'll just attack for now. I'll show you what I'm going to do in the second round. <laughs> um, basically, like that counts as one move for Ark, so he'll have gotten like 15 job experience for that. And now Lunith, he's going to get 15 job experience for that, give or take. Don't worry about the exact numbers. Um, the point is it's individual for each character, so if one character always kills something and the other characters don't even get a turn, they won't get any job experience, for instance. Don't kill it, please. Good. Alright, so, now we have one weakened enemy, no big deal, but everyone's only gone once. Guard happens to give you job experience, and is very quick. So what I've been doing, if I want to get job levels up, is just do this for a few rounds. It takes, you know, five or six rounds. It goes pretty quick. And you'll almost definitely get some levels up, or job levels up specifically. And this is kind of my uh, my recommendation if you're playing along, uh, and you want job levels up. But at the same time, I do mention um, it's not a great idea to really worry about maxing out the early jobs. Um, once we get the other crystals, we will unlock better jobs that uh, just are hands down better than a white mage or a knight or a warrior. Sorry, a warrior. So I'll do maybe a couple more rounds of guard. And I'm almost willing to bet that everyone in the party will get a job level up. From what I read, you also don't have to worry about carryover too much, like getting more than 100 job experience in a single battle, because it'll just carry forward to the next battle. Um, you could overdo it if you do it too much, but uh, you don't have to worry about the exact hitting 100 and then stopping, for instance. You can, you can get 150, and it would just carry over to the next battle. Then you'd only need 50 to get a job level up. So hopefully that makes some sense. Um, as I said, it's probably not a great idea to get to level job level 50 right at the beginning. And in fact, we are right at the Fire Crystal, which means we're going to get some new classes as soon as we kill this boss, if I remember correctly. So why really bother getting super high job levels other than just to kill the boss? And then you're going to change jobs. You know, so that's kind of what I was getting at. Um, also, the first 14 job levels go quicker, so you might notice 1 to 14 goes very quickly, and then after that it kind of slows down. So, you kind of recommend it. I would say getting up to 14 with a job is no big deal. But there you go, look at this, everyone gets a job level up. From one battle, same as normal, but uh, that time everyone got job up. So that's kind of how the mechanics work. I won't be grinding like that very often unless we run into a really difficult boss, like uh, we were running into there. Now there is one more change I'm going to make. Uh, because I really don't want last episode to ever, ever, ever repeat, I'm going to take advantage of my emulator and do a save state. That way if I die, I can either retry or just run away. The, the problem is we have no in-game save. Quick save will end the game and basically reset. You can only load once from it, you know. So let's get on with it. Round two. Hopefully my changes with the red mage uh, and just being a little bit tougher, a little bit higher level will make this go just fine. We're not going to read this all again, don't worry. We're just going to fight the salamander and see if I can win. So, wish me luck, folks. This guy is tough. Even with the extra experience, he's going to be tough. I told you guys this game was tough. <laughs> Alright, salamander. So, we're going to go full-on attack for the first turn at least. I do have Blizzara, so that'll be extra damage. I still forgot to give my... Oh no, Ice Staff. I do have an Ice Staff. I was thinking I might have forgotten to give that to Refia, but I remember. Alright. That should do an awful lot of damage on the first round. 
and then next round we'll start worrying about healing up, depending on what this guy does. So, uh, you'll probably notice here that uh, Lunith will do less black magic damage than Arc. That's a combination of being at a lower job level and being a red mage, who's just not as good. Wow, 600 damage, Ingus. Very nice. That hurts. Ah, that's, see, see this guy? He hits pretty hard. Luckily, he didn't do any uh, full party target spells, so not so bad. I think what I'll be able to do is just have Refia cure using Cura. I'd like to uh, I'd like to get through the first couple rounds. I don't remember exactly how much HP this guy's got, but if we can just nuke him really hard the first few rounds, we might finish him before it gets difficult. Um, yeah, look at that, almost 300 healing per, per person. That's pretty solid. Ah, quit picking on Ark, you jerk. He knows, he knows this guy can do a thousand damage, <laughs> almost. But yeah, I mean, uh, you guys see, a little bit of grinding does a lot. Um, I'm hoping he does do his flame attack, just so you can see Lunith taking so much less damage as a red mage than a monk. But I have a feeling this guy's going to go down pretty easy now, to be honest. No one's really hurting, so we'll just... I'll use a normal cure. I don't know how much it'll heal, but I think... I think little, little Ark will be okay with just a normal cure. Yeah, especially if we go first. That's the main thing. Um, this boss is pretty quick. Well, almost full health, not quite, but... Good, spread the damage around so I can multi-heal. Uh-oh, here we go, here we go. Uh, how much damage? It's still a lot, it's still a lot, but it's definitely not as bad as it was last time, last episode. You notice Lunith did not take much. Oh, and look at that, yeah. So double, more magic, basically. More Blizzara, just so much more damage than the monk did. So, for now, I think this is the way to go. Woohoo! May oh, I, I think, honestly, I made that guy look pretty easy, didn't you? Don't you think? So, we did a redo, a little bit of grinding, and a little bit of preparation, and no problem. And I'm still not using ice shields. I could have equipped ice shields on uh, on uh, the, the, the warrior and the red mage. So, I didn't even have to go that route. We still had physical power. Yay, we finally get the fire crystal! Can you guys guess what classes or jobs we're going to get? It's kind of tricky. Warriors of Light. Eternal Flame. Well, that's nice. Alright, there's a lot of talk about balance and equilibrium in this game. I wonder if that will come up later. <laughs> so what do we get? Powers of Fire. Yeah, can we breathe fire? No. <laughs> Gus Gold turned into a fire dragon. We have to figure it out on our own. So, jobs? Let's see. What have we got? We've got four new jobs. We've got Knight, we've got Scholar, we've got Geomancer, and Ranger. There we go. So Ranger will be bow and arrow, and mostly physical, so you can put them in the back row, but they'll do lots of damage with uh, a bow. They're actually not a bad class. Knight is almost strictly a upgrade from a warrior. Uh, where's my warrior? Did I not have a warrior? Yeah, warrior is equipped. Job 29. So knight is almost a straight up upgrade from that. Not really changing much. Geomancer and Skuller are not my favorite. Geomancer does special attacks based on what background you're fighting in, I believe. And Skuller, I believe, um, kind of reads into the enemies. Like, uh, he can, he can cast um, Libra, basically, for free and see their weaknesses and stuff. I think he can also dispel some magic effects. So he's got some uses, and I believe there's a dungeon coming up where we'll want to use him, actually. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see when I get there. It's been a long time since I've played this game, and it's just slowly coming back to me as I get through it. Anyway, the first bet is uh, most definitely to go talk to those dwarves now that we've actually got the fire crystal. And we've, we've recovered their ice ones. So maybe they'll give us some treasure or something. I'm still kind of broke. I never got a chance to buy level 4 magic because it's, I think, 3,000 per spell. And I just barely could afford what I had to do to switch to red mage. <laughs> Alright, Gustco is completely destroyed. Here you go. Alright, magic keys. Yeah, we got a couple of those. One-time use, opening door thing. Hooray. So anyway, there you go. Ice horns. We didn't have to go through all the cutscenes. That's that's good. 
So I guess he's telling us that we should probably go to Gishal next, which I have been to once before. Yeah, apparently there's women and a key maker. I've got lots of keys though, I did buy some already. Okay, everyone's telling me to go to Gishal. Both horns are back. Why am I going to Gishal though? Rally Ho! Uh oh, he's a fake! Get him out, kick him out! He's not a real dwarf! Alright, fire crystal. Good. Alright, well, the good news is we can uh, get some treasure down here. Why does he moonwalk backwards? Silly dwarf, thinking he's Michael Jackson. Dwarf Jackson. Alright, I wonder what we'll get down in the treasure room. I don't know how he moved that stone. I don't know where he went or where the stone went either. But look at all that treasure! Holy boy! I hope it's useful too. I hope it's not just a bunch of potions. Heroic shield! Sounds good. Phoenix downs are nice and expensive. Knight armor? Probably a good thing. Sculler hat? Well, if I want to use a sculler. Sculler robe? Well, we're going to get gear for our advanced classes. I guess that is the news. Gauntlets, probably for the night. Otter shroom, I have no idea. A shroom that flips around in rivers. Uh, killer bow, I think I actually bought one foolishly. Didn't know it. Didn't know I'd get one here. Book of fire, I think that's what scholars equip as a weapon. Book of ice, yeah, one of the books. I th or no, maybe that's... Is that the spell or is it an item? Hmm, let's go check. Curious. Okay, it is equipable. So 32 damage, dealing elementals. Maybe I will go with the scholar just for fun. Phoenix down and the Gishal Greens. Okay. Well the main thing is it seems to be telling me to use a knight. So guess what, Ingus? You were a knight originally at the castle. Now you can be a knight again. And it's gonna take him four battles to uh, get to his full stats. He'll probably be much weaker for a while, because a level 29 war uh, warrior is pretty good. And a level 1 knight is not as good. But uh, he can equip pretty good stuff. So we get the same weapons. I think I'm still going to go dual weapons for now. Although the heroic shield... We'll see. We might need to do that eventually. Anyway, knight armor has more physical defense. Still have the ice helm, that's good. And gauntlets have way more physical defense than mithril gloves. So, he is the physical defender. And I believe he has an ability, we'll have to see it in battle, that lets him uh, take basically no damage. So, he should also have that guarding of weakened units. So, like if uh, Ark has like, say, 50 HP left, I believe Ingus will cover for him. I think cover is the name of the ability. Uh, otherwise, let's see, what are these other jobs? Um... We could go with a ranger just to use my bow. I do have one. Why not? We'll do uh, we'll do the alternate jobs for a while. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to stick with for the rest of the game, but a ranger could be fun. And I do have uh, a pretty good bow, plus lots of nice arrows. So uh, the, the problem with rangers, if I remember, is that they're very expensive because you have to keep buying arrows if you want them to do lots of damage. Yeah, that's... You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I don't really want a ranger. They can equip lots of good stuff, I believe. Ice Helm. Yeah, he can equip heavy armor, plus being in the back row means he'll take hardly any damage. But, you know, I'm just not a big fan of uh, having to spend money on... Um, and have to, I still have to recover from changing jobs. Oops. Oh, well. But yeah, I'm just not a huge fan of... Uh, what was I trying to say? Having to buy... Uh, buy arrows all the time if you want to use your weapons, so. Although, uh, you know, basically we can just use these for free and this magic's pretty good. Um, next up, who else should we check out? Should we try a scholar? I know I haven't used a thief either. I feel sort of bad for not showing those off, but they use the dagger and stuff that we've got. Let's try a scholar. I think I'll want one and I kind of think he can use magic. A little bit of magic, not much. Um, just level 1 magic mostly. Can you use white magic or black magic? Definitely white magic anyway. Okay, well we'll go with a scholar for a little while. Seeing as they use books. And, um, I don't know. Double books seems to do pretty good damage. 64 seems good. But I do have special scholar armor, so... 
it's better... Well, actually, okay, hold on. Can my mages equip it anyway? No, the mages cannot equip the skull or gear, which kind of makes sense. Alright, and also, just for fun, I think I'll change Ark into a Geomancer, just to show it off. Whether or not I stick with it, I don't know. Um, I kind of like Black Magic, to be on honest. And he can't even... Oh, yeah. I'll have to go buy a bell. I believe these guys use bells. He can equip mage robes at least. Can he use magic? He cannot use magic at all. So we'll try him out. Just have a look. I wonder if there's anything else secret in this room though. Check for sparkles, guys. Check for sparkles. Also, walls that you can walk through. If I remember correctly, Final Fantasy often puts secret walls in treasure rooms. But I don't think there's any here. Shoot. I guess I can't be greedy. We already got quite a lot of treasure. So I guess then the next destination is Gishal, and um, I think I'll just enjoy the trip over. I will. We'll actually fight it out just because I've got some new characters, some new jobs to try out, and uh, I'm kind of curious as to how useful they'll be. I have a feeling the Scholar and the Geomancer will switch back to White and Black Mage before too long. I think, if I remember correctly, I generally don't use. Um, the second tier classes other than the knight very much. I tend to wait till I get the third crystal and then I switch everybody. But we'll see. Maybe maybe these will turn out good. You know I can probably equip two of those. Oh, do I want to spend all my money just to try it out? No, I don't. <laughs> I do not. I'm not sure if geomancers are supposed to be back row or front row. I can't remember if bells do full damage from the back. Seeing as he equips magic armor, I'm going to leave him in the back, just because he won't have much defense. Oh look, a cutscene. Oh, poor kid. Also, the Geomancer, Geomancer armor, like, armor on looks stupid from here. <laughs> Takul needs you. No, Takul! I can't remember where Takul is. Uh oh, Hein. Yeah, that's your that's your hint. I'm pretty sure that's the next dungeon, uh, the Castle Hein or something. And I'm pretty sure you're, or maybe that's the name of the boss. Point is Argus. Is it Argus Tower? There's a name of Castle Argus. I know we were supposed to go there a while ago. Um, if this is the dungeon, I think it is. Uh, that's the one you're supposed to have a scholar for, basically. <laughs> and that little kid kind of told you. Anyway, we're gonna go to Tikol first, I think. So let's check out our new, our new uh, guys. Oh yeah, the uh, I forgot about that. Knights can cast some white magic, I believe. Um, we'll just go with some attacks. So we've got study. We'll study the mermaid. And we will terrain. Yeah, no magic. We'll try some water attack here. It probably won't do anything because they'll be immune to water or something stupid. Mermaid. That's how much HP. It's weak to light. Now you go. Wind Slash. So, actually not bad for zero MP. I can use that and as much as I want. And yeah, Ingus has some work to become good again. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to like using the Geomancer Sculler. I'm pretty low on healing right now. Um, luckily I have the Red Mage to help out a little bit. <laughs> Whack him with a bell. Good job, Ark. <laughs> luckily the Red Mage can sort of cover for some of Refia's healing. I think what I'll do is I'll keep... I might keep this party for the next dungeon, see if I can survive it. And then after that go back to uh, normal mode. White Mage, Black Mage. Because I'll want the higher level White Magic, Black Magic eventually. Um, which one is Tikul? Is that the one by the mountain? Not 100%. Also, you should see as we get through a couple more battles. Uh, you know what would make sense here? Oh, wrong staff. I need the lightning staff. Well, thunder will work. I'm not going to be using study on everything. Not only does it show you the weak points, I'm pretty sure it dispels some defenses. Or something like that. Beat him up with your books. That's actually pretty good damage for book smashing. <laughs> Dual wielding books as a scholar. Never would have thought that would do legitimate damage. And keep in mind, we're on low stats. Um, have I showed you guys this before? Can't remember. 
Everyone has yellow stats because they're reduced because we're still learning our job. Except Refia, who is now trained in the arts of book smacking. We should call this episode Refia Book Slapper. Okay, is this to cool? It's possible. I think, no, it's like Kanan or something, maybe? Haha, <laughs> it's Kanan! I remembered at the last second. Huh. I sure wish I had an airship. <laughs> Don't you guys wish I had an airship so I could get around? What about this one down here? I know, this place already got sacked once, though. Like, didn't it already get taken over by soldiers? Oh, this must be it! Oh. Well, we're off to a great start. What's going on? What's the meaning of this? Oh. Some soldiers got us, guys. Yay! <laughs> we'll make good slaves! Hooray! Aren't you guys happy? <laughs> well, where are we? That's a good question. At least we got new music to listen to. That's right, my knight. Good, good work. But I'm gonna leave us for this the next episode. So my apologies if we didn't get too far this episode. I had lots I wanted to talk about, going over job mechanics and whatnot. And uh, we're at the next dungeon anyway. So next episode, we'll try to escape Castle Hine or whatever the heck this is called. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And have a great day.